welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivor and Spice and welcome to the catch up volume 19. As always, I'm with my boy Amuk and Jex. Amuk, what are you saying today? Of course I'm happy. Yes. Good week. Good week so far. So far, so good. <laughs> yes, and Jex, what are you saying today, bro? Six points in the bag. I'm very happy this week. Very happy. And guys, if you are new to this channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and remember to share this video across to anyone that you like or you don't like. And of course, guys, first of all, on Ready Night TV, we'd like to pay homage. And of course, we very sad news of the passing of Diego Maradona, football legend, Argentina legend, Boca Juniors legend, Barcelona legend, Napoli legend. The legend in football at all. But we'd like to pay our respects to his family, condolences to his family as well. A great legend as well have passed away it is sad as well going towards the end of 2020 in the COVID season it's just pretty much sad and of course just a moment for Diego Maradona and obviously as well our condolences to his family as well guys but let's move straight on to this week we'll be talking about the match against Istanbul we'll be talking about the match against West Brom also of course we'll look at the preview against Southampton and as well as other as other topics as well first of all let's go straight into that match in Istanbul got battered yesterday got peppered yeah fantastic first half I love the first 45 minutes it was great uh, it was great football oh, brought me back to the times where Ronaldo Tevez and Rooney was playing up front for us in 2008 but then I realized Oli's at the wheel <laughs> and then I got brought back to reality. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, I need to calm myself down, bro. But apart from that, I was really, really happy with yesterday's win against um, Istanbul. We played really well. I was, do you know what? I was glad to see Daniel James score. Same. I was really happy for him, even though we uh, we don't rate him. You do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you do. do. Yeah, sorry. No, no, I do rate him. I just think he's got potential yes he got potential but i was glad and then, uh, unselfish of great mason greenwood you know because you know he wanted to come on there and score mm -hmm. but teeing him up teeing up daniel james who needed it he needs a confident boost as well sure. it was really good the match overall was good apart from the second half in the first 20 30 minutes where i thought we died down we did we definitely did die down until the last what five ten minutes and then we started getting them on their counter attack of course because we are counter attack fc that's what we're known for, <laughs> bona fide counter-attacking team. What did you think of that match, Amok? Um, obviously, big up to the team. Obviously, it's a wonderful performance. Like you said, it's we haven't really seen us do what we did in the past half like that. So for them to come out do what they did against all the odds, I believe it's a wonderful experience to just watch us sit back and see that team do what they did yesterday. Mm -hmm. A good performance. By the end of the day, I don't want to be a negative person, but I don't want all of us to get excited and feel like things changed. These are things that it's supposed to do. It's a must. That's why we all got upset when we lost against um um. Istanbul, the first game. The first game. Yeah. That's why we got upset. <clears throat> I'm not getting carried away over this win. It's a wonderful win, great performance, but I believe it's something I'm just doing that can do, based on the players that we've got based on how I see them integrating, like you said, um, um, or how do you call it, like, counter-attack FC. They should win, like, by far. But at the end of the day, I can't take nothing against the players. It's a wonderful win, great win, but we shouldn't get carried over. There is still a lot of work to do with this club. A mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you got carried away a little bit, but when you came out to reality, what made you come out to reality? No, we have Oli at the bell. So I think that's all of us are really point back. <clears throat> Oli, thank you for this wonderful week. At least you're not under pressure or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I want to see this happening every week, not almost, but every week. If we can do the same performance, get the same um, wins, Oli, you will be in the better position. So just a wonderful win. Happy that we won ecstatic, but there's more need to be done. And Jax, what was your thoughts on that match? <sighs> The first half was amazing. Um, for me, two players stood out. Of course, Bruno done his thing. Definitely. And then Rashford done his thing as well, to a small extent. <laughs> but Van der Beek yes. and Cavani. Oh, you mean Tarzan? Tarzan. Especially <laughs> Van der Beek. He looks like Tarzan. You know, Red's yeah. pulling my head. He looks like Tarzan. Anyway, <laughs> Van der Beek was quality. His balls, 
precise, timely. He was just doing the simple stuff. Pass on goal, pass on goal. He was... Yeah. I wouldn't say similar to Herrera, but in the sense that he had that energy. He was going up and down, you know? And was making things happen. And also, he was barking instructions to players that where you should be. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I think that Bruno and Van der Beek, it can work against the majority of teams. So we need to see a bit more of that. And Cavani, his link-up play... Oh. Ooh. Passing, I mean, I told His you. Uh, play was very, told you. very good. It's not about the goals that he scores. Very it's good. That in the position, he's always standing. I remember you said it, even the committee takes to say that it's always at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. Like, wonderful dog. One thing about someone like Cavani, especially with his link up, he can make a bad pass look like a good pass. Definitely. Yeah, because of his Definitely. first touch, he's very good as well. And then he obviously heads it and brings the ball down. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. You know, some, some strikers, they, 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 they've got that quality where if you give even if you some certain players, if you give them a shit pass, they make it look like a good pass. Even though you've missed hit and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they'll <laughs> still control that well and then give it back to the next person. Mm -hmm. Definitely true. Anything else? Great game. Second half, to be expected, we're three no up. So I think we sat back a little bit. I, again, maybe it's a bit attacking minded, but I would have gone for a bit more attack in the second half. Oof. Get more goals, let's not invite pressure. But overall, very good game. I'm very happy with the game. Man of the match? <laughs> Van der Beek. Man I know Beek. Bruno scored two, yeah. but Van der Beek, what he's done in that middle. Please, if you haven't wa just watched the whole nine minutes again and just watch Van der Beek. He was the man of the match as well, because Brilliant. what he done was just what? Instrumental, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. he was instrumental. And I'm who was your man in the match in that match? I can't say, Van de, I can't say, it's just gonna be Van der Beek. It could have easily been Bruno, Bruno, Bruno no, two goals and, and, and a kind of an assist to know, me when he gave Rashford that We all know Bruno and his quality, mm -hmm. what he gives us week in and week out. Even when he's having a bad game, we know it's Bruno. But Van der Beek, I haven't been given that opportunity to show us what he's got. Mm -hmm. And we know what he's got. We, we've watched him play, we know what we. When we sign, we know what we're getting. But for other fans out there, he don't really know his abilities, the quality that he got. It was just good to see him do what he did yesterday. And I believe that convinces not just me, but a whole lot of Manchester United fans. It convinced me, I'm not going to lie. When we first signed him, I was a bit unsure because um, I thought he'd maybe be a squad player, not really a key player. But from what I saw yesterday and from what I've seen from him this season, we still have to be key player. I reckon he might touch that, to be key player. touch that first and I always knew he was going to be a key player. He was going to be an important squad player. It's just Oli that doesn't see how do you, How did like, you introduce him? We saw him? what he done in Ajax. How did you introduce him? The first thing we spoke about him, the midfield maestro. <laughs> maestro, bro. Like, you can't take away from him, though. It's Oli that needs to know he's a midfield maestro because for some <laughs> reason he don't know it. Oli don't know it. But I've always, when, the moment we signed Van der Beek, I always knew that he's a first team player. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as well, an important player. Like, he's not a squad player. No. He's a very good player. Very, very good player. This is someone that's played against the best teams in, in Europe, in, especially in the Champions League. That, this is a midfielder that scored against Real Madrid. Remember when Ajax knocked out Real Madrid? Mm -hmm. Guy scored a winning goal, like, it was just too much. And even about him playing, winning, or whatever, it's just as an individual. One thing that I like about this guy is this brilliant. Intelligence, it's, very intelligent. Like, you can't take that away from him. Like, mm -hmm. And when you got people like Bruno who gives you the same thing on the table and you got Pogba that does the same thing, it's just like you got pressure on him based on the media and stuff. But I believe that midfield, they've got very good creative individuals mm -hmm. that actually, you might say, nah, they're too intelligent. Brilliancy is something that like, got to give them to you, Bruno and mm -hmm. Van I can't, I don't even know to, I might be gassing them up too much. I'm just trying to take my time not to say it. Not to go over the top, but this you can't really. How can you predict? How can you describe him to you, please? You describe him to me, like, <laughs> isn't it what I've been saying, bro? Playing Fred and McTominay doesn't make sense. sense. We're losing creativity. Bitty. You see how they can play together now. Now we're even speechless. We improve <laughs> the football in that first 45 minutes was kind of mad, was, you know, the way they were just passing goal. It was slick, tick. it was slick, it was beautiful, and it's like. For Once some reason, you felt there. like this players want to play for Oli in the first half. No, it's the Champions League that makes them want to play. Like, you mean, like, <laughs> no, it's I'm the, just it's saying, the occasion. for one second, it's not the manager. Like, I know it's he's not, not playing for Oli. Because the performance is in the first half. But, like I said before, like, we don't want us to get, I don't want us to get excited and stuff or get gassed. It's just Mr. Boot. If we do this against 
team that I ain't seen the, the top Premier League teams. I want us to be doing this against West Brom. I want us to do this against like Southampton. Like even the Leeds just came up. Uh, Mo, my question is, why don't this happen on a consistent basis? Especially when you highlight the fact that we've got a good level of creativity. Why is it that we can't open up these teams with all these midfielders that we have, and we can't even um, Bosco play against teams that that love to play on the low? Block I can just emphasize on what Jake's been saying for the past few weeks. Saying why are we playing defensive football when we're playing at Old Trafford. If you playing McTominay and Fred and all these other players, where's the creativity? It's not there. It's mm -hmm. so on the bench. So that I don't want to because people might most of our viewers might think I'm an anti Oli person and that I'm not. But one thing that I could do is point out all the mistake that that Oga at the top does and Oli's the Oga at the top in this situation. So at the end of the day, if I was not pointing finger anyone, should be Oli. So if I see Oli go change his tactics or philosophy over how he picks his team i think what, he's, what we did yesterday should be a great example but i promise you like this and watch the first time team that we uh, played yesterday our next game is going to be different players different mm -hmm. tactics mm -hmm. and we might lose because this is something of experience we can be cap mm -hmm. and jex um do you think that on the weekend we go back to route one <laughs> do you know what the problem for me with especially the Premier League games, the team selection. Most weeks, we don't have the perfect 11 starting, especially in that midfield. So as Amok said, if we can get two creative players in there and just the one holding, it will give, some, give us a better chance to win the game, you know? Um, also, the coaching, mm -hmm. the training. Yeah. There when is, teams sit back, no they're only a place to why you said coaching and training, that don't exist. There appears to be a plan A, but there's no plan B, C or D. I don't see different ways of trying to break teams down. But with the better, more intelligent players starting, we can see more, you know? Fair enough. And let's just hope that we continue this momentum into the weekend against Southampton because that will be a tough game. But we are straight to that next match, the match before that, which was against West Brom, the most boring game I've ever watched <laughs> again. Another game where we, we won by a penny. And it's like to me, like I said, me, I feel like Oli plays it safe in the Premier League. But in the Champions League, you know, he's in a good position. You go, he, he plays a bit more expansive football, he tries more in the Champions League. No, I think Where in the takes Premier League, he plays it so safe. I think, I think he takes more risk playing the Champions League games than the Premier League games. Yeah, because and I believe he should take more risk in the Premier League games. Because in the Champions, Champions League, League, the team that you play sometimes is slower football. Whereas the Premier League obviously is fast and intense. 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 So, yeah. So, we played against West Brom and won 1 0 by, by Pelly. And then to me, when I watched that match, I, thought, I was thinking to myself, if Bruno wasn't there, <laughs> would it be 0 0? Only out again. <laughs> Simple as. Simple as. What did you think of that match, Jax? Do you know what? I don't want to be too negative. It was a very poor game. It was a totally different side to what we saw yesterday. But. We got the three points in the bag. I think that's the most important thing. Our first home win in the Premier League. Let's move on from that. But hopefully, the performance won't be the same as uh, Saturday against Southampton. We need to be a lot better because that performance against West Brom wasn't cutting it. Definitely wasn't cutting it, and and, and there were so much signs that what is going on. And then again, we play Southampton like that. It's gonna be problems. They are actually on the, they are on fire. They've been winning the past few games. So I think I believe Manchester need to step up the game facing Southampton because you don't want to play like how you play against West Brom. You get punished. Oh. They've been taking the chances. And I could only emphasize on what Jack said, like it was a boring match. It was dreadful. I, I believe I messaged you after I told you if any Manchester United fans get excited over this win, there must be something wrong with them. Yeah. There must be definitely like a mental issue wrong with you. Um, I believe Manchester needs to step up the game facing Southampton. We shouldn't play the same way we played against West Brom because Southampton been on fire. They've been winning few. They, they, I think they won the last game, last two games, mm -hmm. and they are on fire. So I believe all he needs to. Like we've been saying, stop playing defensive football in the Premier League. Like take chances, take that, make that risk. Oli, it's this weekend. You've got a wonderful week. Please finish the weekend with a three point in the Premier League. 
that puts us in a better situation, a position. I don't want to see us in the bottom half. I want to see us in the top half. And if you can do that this weekend for us, that would be amazing. And that game against West Brom was boring, boring, boring. I messaged you, told you, if any fans get excited over this game, there must be something wrong with them. Without the penalty, I still believe they should have had penalty because that ball was a penalty against us. But unfortunately, we got uh, we are turned it against them, and we got we 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 got the goal that given that we got another penalty that gave, that Bruno missed it. I, I, I missed it, but the keeper came out and he tried. I'm I'm really getting confused talking about all of this because it's the win that we did not deserve. Bruno. We did not deserve it. That he lost it. Bruno, Bruno, Bruno. Without Bruno, where is Manchester United right now? I don't know. But we'll probably be. And I've got slums. a friend from Spain that messaged me, say, Mark, Bruno reminds me of, I don't want to get the fans or I don't want to get gas, but say Bruno reminds him of Ronaldo when we had Ronaldo back in the days. Yeah, that, you see that excitement that, that we had, one guy, that, that one guy. And when he said it to me, he spoke Barcelona and I was like, and he lives in Spain. And I was like, that's true, no? The that's excitement. Where from yeah, the excitement. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Bruno, again, once again. We just got to thank you every week in, week out, because... We point finger PP been doing the bits like you mentioned. Um, James been having a past season, right? But that little boost that Mason helped him get yesterday, that will boost his season up. Hopefully, hopefully. He needs it. All right, guys. Um, of course, little bit of rumor, little bit of rumor. In of course, um, we have rumors that of course, um, Manchester United are again, again and again and again looking to bring in a director of football which could mean the end of ed woodward of course it's it's, it's in the out tabloids and it's just a little rumor whether it's true or not i don't really believe in this as well because i don't see ed woodward going nowhere i don't even see a, a director of football being hired because we've been trying to hire one for two years or three years and nothing's ever materialized from all of this gibberish talk that mention that give to us but I would love to see Ed Woodward go and bring in a director of football. Because we don't need Ed Woodward. I think he can, Ed Woodward, he can stay on the commercial side, the business side. But we definitely need a director of football, you're correct. Definitely. Because I'm sure Ed makes us money, but in terms of football decisions, he's not the guy. He's not the guy. I don't think Ed makes us money. <laughs> I don't think so. I think the club, the club, club just the title, this badge, makes us that money, not Ed. And just cut the deals because he knows the people that brings that big investment. But trust me, if you work in the banking industry or maybe the financial industry, if we could get someone similar to Ed, who knows a little bit more about football, it might help a club. And the guy, the, the Manchester is looking forward to go get Everton, I forgot his name, the Everton guy was the guy, the, the football, the guy from Everton, the Manchester one. The, yeah, let's have a look. Yes, but there is a guy that mentioned that they were looking for. But I thought at first they were looking at a uh, top quality player. I thought no, they should be looking at the best of the best of the directors of football. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't just look at someone that's like that. I know he's good and he can bring in deals. He brought in James What's Rodriguez. His history, though? No, apparently he's been bringing in good talent since Everton got him in 2018. Okay. I believe in 2018. But if you've been honest with yourself, you've seen clearly, you've seen clearly, Everton been oh. getting good signings since 2018. Marcel Brands is who, the director. The director, yeah. yeah. And for me, I don't know much about this person, but I just believe that. What about the Evan Van der Sea situation? What about the Patrick Ever situation? Or even another speculation that we saw on the same room, like on this on the internet as a rumor. Um, finding it, someone that knows the club, someone that been within the club, someone that. I I, I don't want that after Oli. I don't want no no ex player, no one affiliated with the club. I want someone that that's not from this club that will come in here and tell my man, you need to go, you need to go. Because if you get these play, people like Rio Ferdinand, they're going to look at sentiment. Daniel J. They're going to no, give I them sentiment. Understand, I, understand, I, understand. Why? I want someone that knows what they're doing, that's ruthless, that doesn't have no ties with no players, no clubs. And get rid of and chop men that needs to be chopped, like certain coaches and certain. I just want to come in and look at everyone and say, Edward, you know what? He's not the guy, by the way. He's going to play this football. This is well, he's not the guy already. It's true. No, 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 no. It's the guy it's is already it's telling true. the man, we need to get rid of him, by the way. It's true. We need to... No offense. 
Uh, if he approves, then we, he stays. But unless he can tell the um, the CEO, Oli's not good, but we can get a better coaching staff that will support him more and make him successful. We can give him a blueprint. Blueprint. Mm -hmm. Then I know just the right people. Simple as. But even as that, that's a risky situation, though, because I still got 100% doubt in Oli's, Oli's ability. Yeah, but the coaching will be better. It would be better, but it wouldn't change that much because it's Oli. <laughs> I'm just being honest. You've given all the chances. He's got something. I know he's just a bona fide piece. All he ain't got, got nothing something. in him. Like I don't see nothing. <laughs> I might he's be a something. hater, but I told you from the very first day, even that long win from last season, that to this on um, on um, um, PSG win, everyone, every single Manchester fan was getting gas. I told you, I'm not convinced. But he's got something though. I don't think he does win got... certain games when you think. Oli did well. No. He got the tactics right. I ain't never given Oli. I ain't never done that. All I got to say is the players. Because I believe in the players that we've got. We've got good quality players that can turn up when they believe they have to turn up. So Oli's job is to make them play turn up. Even as that is failing, he's always sitting there like this. Hands fold, legs fold and that. How are you going to motivate these players to move from point A to point B? Now you've seen um, Chelsea West Ham. Chelsea went up three goals, West Ham came from behind. If that manager was sitting, folding his hand in foot, do you think West Ham would have came back 3-3? Free free? No. He was on the line, organising. Like, you know, there's so much that all is missing. It's not about just tactics. But, like, I, I didn't think I'm not a hater. He is the manager at Manchester United. You just got to support him and favour some of his ideas and stuff. But things that he does wrong that we believe he could have done better, we would mention that. What about you, Jax? What's your opinion on this? With me, the director of football for the last three or four years now, the fans have known it, <laughs> the media have known it, our ops have known it, even relatives even my, have known it. Even my humble child knows this. Everyone has known this. This even is the like one. Exes. Exactly. <laughs> this is the one job vacancy that's so elusive. You don't know where to find it yet. There is actually a vacancy, so they say. Um, I just feel like the club are not taking this thing seriously. And it just shows how little football knowledge there is at the top. The fact that we've waited three or four years and we still haven't got a director of football. So I don't want to get too gassed on this news, to be honest with you, because I heard this a couple of years like, ago. Yes. We've heard it three or four times coming up. Until we actually sign one, then I'll be delighted. Until then, it's just rumours for me, you know? So as I said, I said it's just rumours. My man's not impressed about Oli as well, of course, but, you know, as it's rumours, I hope the rumours are true, but I know it's not. And guys, let's move straight to the next topic. We have the return of fans back into the stadium. Finally. Finally, after a long, 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 what, six, seven months of not seeing fans at the stadium, which it really, really did affect certain games. For Oli, it did, because Oli used the excuse of, Oh, there's no fans. That's the reason why we probably losing and not playing to our best, bro. That's not an excuse, man. No, he's still no, playing, no, no. He's still playing that, that same pitch. You know that pitch don't change. You know, <laughs> you play with games mm -hmm. with less fans. So, but yeah, but I'm quite pleased to, to hear that after December, I think after the second of December, mm -hmm. they will be allowing fans certain stadiums or depend on the location of the region that you are. Mm -hmm. You may be allowed to have two thousand or four thousand. Mm -hmm. You know. But it just depends on... But it's, it's fantastic news. I'm very sure the Premier League players are ecstatic and happy about that. Because, of course, I, they do... Uh, they have Some of them have admitted that they miss the fans. And it does make a difference. Of course, mm -hmm. it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're playing Example, home, example you're playing Liverpool. Home. Liverpool probably need their fans. <laughs> they need their fans. They need their fans. It's good. It's good news. Because an interesting stat there's been more away goal uh, away wins than mm -hmm. home wins in the yeah. Premier League this season and that's the first time ever you know so I just think it shows you how important home fans are to the home teams so it's very good news albeit just between two and four thousand coming in yeah depending on where you are the state of your your, your lockdown and, and exactly and etc I think but it's a good start it's a good start you might not be getting that much fun today because the corona situation is to pick up and move mm -hmm. so you know that's why the, this that's second lockdown was they made, were made, free was from the north mm -hmm. so hopefully our side gets a bit better and we could see not obviously every fan but 
that 2,000 or 4,000 fans could help in change side of things. Definitely. Definitely. But I, I welcome it though. I welcome no, the we, idea. Of, of course, we were excited about that. It's nice seeing, watching actually football and see fans just shouting, screaming and that. I mean, you, obviously, you know, they got the the audio thing all backed up with live games and stuff. But we want to see real people showing love to the clubs that they do love. Like, we miss that. That like football is one hell of a passion game. It's like a love battle mm -hmm. that we, the fans and the players and other teams and the fans and the players go through. So we we miss that battle that like we actually do miss it. So fans coming back into the stadium would be a wonderful thing for us fans. Cool. And of course, guys, it was a wonderful weekend of the Premier League last week. A couple of good games. Man City versus Tottenham. That was my favourite game. Tottenham were top of the table, guys. Yeah. Can you believe it? I can. You know what made me... That's what upset me the most. When I messaged you after we, we beat West <laughs> Brom... <laughs> One nil. I'm like, I'm sitting here and I'm seeing a guy that we sat because you're playing negative football and all that kind of stuff. He's sitting top of the table, just finished being a Man City two 0 I'm happy for him though. Yeah, it's good I'm for not, him. Yeah, it's yeah, good for well, him. I'm happy for Jose. Yeah, yeah, but this is what upsets me. Actually, messaging with anger, like we got rid of Jose, right? Mm -hmm. To improve the squad, to improve the Before way we play, to improve our team in general, right? Where is it? <laughs> when improvement have we seen? We've seen flashes, that's it. Well, he just got Tottenham less than a year. He's already seen, I promise you, Ole never sat number one for a whole week or two in the Premier League table. One thing I can say about Mourinho that he's been backed. He's been backed this summer. He's oh. got the players that he wanted. The fact that he's got Bell in his team as well. He's got Tottenham playing the way he wants to play as well. So yeah, he's cutting at Tottenham, and I still believe in terms of players, money be spent on managing the team. Manchester spent more money, spent gave Mourinho that first season. I don't, I don't want to call it a backup. It was a bribe for Mourinho to actually come to United to manage the club, giving Pogba, Ibrahimovic, Mkhitaryan, that he already had players that um, um Van Gaal signed that was actually doing the bit, but. They couldn't cut it from Mourinho. But Tottenham, he didn't really sign players like that. Just got one or two, three signing this season, cutting it already. Yeah, because with Mourinho. He probably got the number one targets. I'm very sure Manchester United. It's upsetting. They never really gave him his number one targets because I feel like Manchester United, certain players, they signed for themselves for commercial reasons. Mm -hmm. That when we signed Pogba, was it really. Mourinho, or I, I didn't feel like it was Mourinho. I it feel was like Ed. it was Ed Woodward that was always going to sign Pogba, even <clears> when <throat> Van Gaal was there, he was about to leave. Mm -hmm. Same thing as Shaw, Luke Shaw. When we bought Luke Shaw, What's there was no manager. Um, was, we got rid of Moyes. Okay. We signed him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Um, this Cavani is commercial. Ibrahimovic. Well, well, that time we signed Ibrahimovic. We normally not wouldn't sign anyone of that age. No. It was for sure a sponsorship deal. So I believe with Mourinho, he never got his number one target. Just like just like our current manager right now. He's not getting <clears> his number one targets. He's getting the second option. Or, you know what? This guy's available. How about we get him instead? I know you wanted this guy, but we don't care what you want. Yeah, you because know, we're all about this. Like We want to get the guy, this guy because why? He's going to bring us more money. Mm -hmm. You're going to bring us Jack. If we bring a Jack Grish, he's not going to give us anything. We're going to bring Cavani because he's going to sell shirts in Uruguay. But guess what? <laughs> but guess what? You would improve Jack Grealish sales. Like, if Jack Grealish comes to United and busts the tank for first season, mm -hmm. I promise you, Jack Grealish shirt number will be the highest selling number for United fans in the world. Because we, we, we are fans. When we got Mattel, after Mattel bust the first season, what was the highest selling number? Yeah, you know, was Mattel. I, I don't know like, about Jack Grealish. No, if he, like I said, that's what I said. If he I comes and busts the thing like Bruno, what Bruno is doing, I promise you, Bruno number probably the highest selling number this season. Mm. Like, because he's the best player in the team. Bruno. So, we, we what we do as fans is, every season we got a player that busts and they like does whatever they do, that following season, that player's number is going to sell more than any other player. We've seen it with Bruno, we've seen it with Pogba. Pogba actually wasn't even the next season, it was the same season that we signed Pogba. 
because they're excited, the fans will be too excited. Mm-hmm. That the fans will be too excited to see Pogba back. Mm-hmm. But like I said, stop. We should really play along the <clears throat> like the line that keep it average. Do a bit of commercial and do a bit of footballing. Cool. But regarding the Premier League roundup, we want a bit off topic there. But yeah, what was the most impressive match you watched? Or <laughs> I would say the Tottenham match as well because. As much as I didn't want to say, I was look. I wanted um, um, Man City to win, just cause I hate Tottenham and I dislike Mourinho. Cool. And James, what about you? Same. Um, that match was Tottenham City, one hundred percent. What about um, Arsenal? Arsenal drew nil nil. That was a boring game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, if they drew, if they if they was if they drew like three three, you see that intensity back and forth. Or if they because, lost. Yeah. What about what about Tottenham? Um, the the, 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 the Liverpool versus Leicester. Leicester. First off was intense. Missing, missing a couple of the players. First off was yeah. intense, but second off Liverpool just dominated. But no, uh, Liverpool just dominated the second half. Playing the same way as they always do. do I was scared watching the second half against Leicester was dangerous. Liverpool looked frightened. The pack. There was this time here yeah, before um, Flamingo scored his goal. He hit the post. The keeper saved the ball. That the back. I was like. You know when you have a bad day, but eventually you did get that goal. I'm scared. Like I don't want to see face Liverpool playing that way they played against Leicester. They dominated the match. They made that you know that boss tells this is my stuff. Like I'm taking it. You lot are nothing. I'm winning. Leicester was nothing that day. Leicester no. Liverpool dominated. Cool, so that was that was that was that was a good match. But yeah guys, of course the most which one was the best match out of all of those games? I would say the Tottenham City because City actually had a lot of the ball and did what they got to do but you know Mourinho always got to get the win. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, let us know exactly who, what, what your, man, your match was exactly. during that weekend and also let us know exactly who was your man in the match from yesterday's game against Istanbul. If you're watching this on Friday then Tuesday's game against Istanbul. And let me just say this, I, well, we are real fans you know. We sitting here talking, all this saying this nice stuff about these other clubs. Never on a club. <laughs> like normally, it would be nicer to say what team, what game did you watch that made you weekend. I want to see Manchester United, <laughs> but as you lot can see, none of us said United. Because <laughs> we, because we won one nil with penalty. Right. <laughs> yes. But well, let's go straight to the game against Southampton this weekend. Ouch. A tough game. Tough game yes. away. Mm-hmm. Which uh, we're playing against a team that loves to keep the ball on. <coughs> well. They're very good at keeping Hazard, Husef, or whatever, Hazard North, or Hazard Kosef. The, the new signing is yes. awesome, it, fam. It's going to show Oli again what going Because last time we played Southampton during lockdown, we struggled. We let's, struggled to beat Southampton. This is the second half that we've got that edge, but first half, we were training yeah. in terms of possession. I. Don't know what Manchester United will be like this weekend because as we saw Manchester United do bits against Istanbul, but knowing Oli is gonna revert back to playing it safe mode <laughs> and play two double pivot, two holding midfielders, probably Fred and McTominay, mm-hmm. and then of course probably not play. I know that Van, Van der Beek won't start. be playing. He won't be starting. He's due to be starting. I don't. I can't believe why he hasn't had a start in the Premier League. It's just beyond me. It's really beyond me. It's like, it's like Oli is blind. Like he actually wears blind man glasses and actually holds that stick and walks around. Because I can see it. You can see it. You can see it. My dick can see it. My sperms can see it with no eyes. Like, the like, should be starting. Let's so just, like, boom. Let keep keep it, it, I don't know. Let's keep it official, yeah? Even the pudding in BT Sport, Sky Sport, Ben everyone can see everyone's it. saying it which like they are seeing it why in the plane anyway my personal opinion of that match i don't know i don't think we will win i don't think we'll win against southampton because southampton whenever we play southampton it's a tricky match and we haven't had the best results against southampton just the last it. few years because i remember Last year or the year before with Mourinho, we the game was a problem. No, no, I think we beat them. No, no, Old Trafford. Recent, no, no. Old Trafford. They the did. game was problems. The season before that, the game was problems. There's only one, I think, one Even season. during Van Gaal's era, they gave us hell of a problem. 
Yeah. That's when they had money in them lots too. Even last season, the second half of the <clears> season, <throat> when we played them, they gave a problem again. So I'm not too sure so about this. I'll thing. go for it. Me and Jakes, we should do the reverse. I'm going for a loss. We should do the reverse thing. Do you know what? I think it might be a draw, you know. You think I'm so? I'm going to go for a draw this week. I know Southampton, they sit fifth. Mm -hmm. They've been doing very they well. They sit fifth? Yeah. You see, me, I'm sitting there. I don't even know what I'm just saying. Well, that well, we I will lose. Been, but I had no idea that they're sitting fifth right I now. I said they've been they on fire. A few weeks ago. They've, they've been, been on well. fire. They've yeah. won the last two games. They sit Rah. fifth. They've been scoring goals. I think Maguire needs to stick on Ings because <laughs> Ings is, for me, their biggest Can threat. I tell you something? Maguire would never sit on Ings. Because why you know why? Maguire, sorry for saying this, I've actually realised he's a pussy. Do you know why I'm saying this? Because I've always I've recognised something about Maguire. Whenever there is a dominant striker that's playing, man, man doesn't mind mark him. He gives it to Lindelof and he stays to make sure that he's free. He used to be the, like, for example, against Dominic Cavalier, the goal that we conceded, well, Lindel, he was battling against Lindelof. Mm -hmm. Where was Maguire? Maguire, the captain himself, he'd be telling Lindelof, listen, yeah, I know you're good in that, but I'm the big man, I'm dominating the air, I'm stronger than you. I'm, I will man mark players like that. He'll he never it, does that. He has, I've, I've actually noticed. In and a lot of these that's games, what he's always like the free I'm man. Back in Lindelof, he's always the free man. Because he's the only guy that does the dirty Jet. job. He's always the free man, and Lindelof's the one that's getting moved to. He's well, right, I would prefer though. Maguire right. to be on the man. Yes. Because what we He's saw even with Calvin Lewin, we conceded that goal. If Maguire was there instead of Lindelof, Maybe Maguire would have won. There. But he's always running away from this. Exactly. Maguire, That's why against Southampton, they need to tell Maguire, stick on Ings. Yeah, he plays like he's, he's a midfielder. Yeah, like, Did you notice yes, even yesterday, there was this particular time that he was up for the little bit. And I'm saying, go back. We don't need you there. You got too much. Even he's the weekend match, so even the weekend match against out. West Brom, he was coming forward too much. They lost just, a better ball playing this. Thing. Don't do that. He's Different. No, they lost play better football than uh, Maguire. He's much more, he's more quality. He got more quality on the no. ball. He's even passing from the defense going forward. He's ten to better than Maguire. So Maguire should stay at the back a little bit than Lindelof. But why are we going Lindelof staying at the back? Like, and he causes us trouble. He's not that fit. He's weak. As much as I like him, but that's his weakness. Yeah, Lindelof. Lindelof. Yeah, it's suspect. It's weak. So, it's weak. So why is Maguire allowing my man to go up there? It's like me allowing my little brother to fight my battles. battles. To be fair, like I said, if you man would prefer Lindelof to be on Ings, I hear that, but for me... Lindelof no, I didn't say that. But we, we, he said no. he wants Maguire to why be Ings. do his actual job? Okay, okay. Because as I I've said so. before, I've noticed in a lot of games, especially when we have a he had the game, he's a dominant striker, striker that's called most problem, even Demba Bar. Yeah, yeah, in the first, yeah, in the first game. Maybe manager instructions as well. Maybe Ma the gaffer's not telling him, you must stick on this player this game. Well, well, you're, the cap you're the captain. You should make a captain decision and say, screw you, manager, I'm the captain. I'm going to make a captain decision yeah. and I'm going to stick on this guy. Yeah, but Guy should be defending more than Lendelof. Because, simple as, Lendelof is actually good, but I felt like, Maguire, you're the bigger defender. You mm. know, mm -hmm. in terms of strength, I think you got you more stronger than Lendelof. Like you should be holding in place. Definitely. But as we all see, Lendelof improved the past few weeks. Even Maguire, the way he started the Premier League season, and what we've seen in these past two, three weeks, much improvement. Hold up to you, man. And we hope you can not continue doing this great job for us. Cool. So me, straight loss. Jacks? Draw. Draw. I'll be the optimistic one. We are gonna win against Southampton. Cool. So Sp win. Loss and draw. So it's all even. <laughs> Let's just hope. So three points, no points, one point. And the average. <laughs> I left my, my brain at work. The average probably a draw. <laughs> but yes, guys, we have come to the end of the show. It was wonderful, wonderful show. I enjoyed it. Of course, as we would do a mook. Um, I'm not even going to say it. Just, just tell them where they Pretty can find it. Cool. <laughs> 16 down the Instagram. <laughs> and with Jex, where can these lovely people find you? Uh, Instagram, Jex underscore United. And of course, if you want to find me, you can find me at Ivorian underscore Spice on the Twitter and also on the Instagram and also on the Snapchat. But do remember to actually follow the official Instagram account of Red United, which is Red United TV. One, baby. 
Get me? Remember to smash that like button. And remember to subscribe to this channel. Remember to share this, share to all your friends, even the people you don't like as well. Remember to share it to them just to piss them off. And if girls, if you don't, if you have a problem with your ex and you just want to piss them off, share this link so he can be like, what then is this? Then see them cute man them there. Yeah, like, just tell um, what is this? A guy that does it better than you. <laughs> Don't know. Get me, guys. Anyway, guys, it's been it's been lovely. As always, remember to keep it united. And remember to keep it red united. We out.